In this video, we're going to learn how to create curves in 3D and control our form bodies with them. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to get into creating a form and using a 3D curve to help control its location. So let's get started by going to Create Form, and let's start by creating a couple sketches. We're going to first begin sketching on the right plane and ensure that we have 3D sketch turned off. We're going to start by creating a 2D spline, and we're going to just drag one from the left to the right, only with endpoints, and then hit Escape. We're going to go ahead and give it a very gradual curve, and then we'll finish the sketch. Next, we want to create a new sketch on the top plane. We're going to do the same thing, creating that curve out to the right and saying OK. I'm going to hit Escape to get off my spline tool, and again, I'm going to give it a very gradual arc. When you're thinking about this, we want to project this curve and this curve normal to their sketch planes and create a curve in 3D where they intersect. In order to accurately control the endpoint locations, we want to use Create, Project Include, and Project to bring either the entire spline or its endpoints down to our sketch plane. We're going to say OK, and then we want to create a horizontal relationship between those endpoints and our new spline. This ensures that we accurately control the exact distance or the endpoints of the projection. Now, because of the way that Fusion 360 works, we have to create a third sketch in order to project this in 3D. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. And now we want to go to Create, Project Include, and Intersection Curve. We'll select both of our splines, and you can already see a red preview in 3D. We'll finish the sketch, and we'll rotate this around, and now you can see that we've created that 3D curve. Let's go ahead, expand our sketches, and hide Sketch 2 for now, but we're going to leave sketch, in this case, sketch one active and sketch three, our projected curve. Let's take a look at one more way in which we can make this work. I'm going to start a new sketch on the top plane. I'm going to begin over here. And I'm going to start giving this just a very little bit of curvature. When we look at this, it's in 2D. It's flat on a plane. But we can actually create a 3D sketch directly from here by turning on the 3D sketch option. We can sketch in 3D if we have reference edges, but in 2D, what we're doing is we're simply sketching on a plane. If we want to move this up in 3D, we can use the option to switch planes, and then we can use OK to end the line creation. You can see that one has gone up in 3D. However, it's a little bit tricky for us to control these splines when they're in 3D. So I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to use Modify, Move Copy, to take this endpoint and simply pull it up into 3D. This allows us to control the curve in this direction. However, we still don't have control of the curve from the right. You can see by simply moving it up and down, this point is staying fixed and the curvature is changing. But this method is a little bit harder to match some underlying geometry, say on a blueprint. We still have this as an available option, but just keep in mind it's a little bit trickier for us to control. There is one more method that we're going to talk about using sketch one, but for right now, let's go ahead and hide it. And then let's talk about creating a form that goes between these two. There are a couple different ways that we can do this. If we happen to have two curves, we can loft between them. We can select this curve and this curve, and we can create a lofted body directly between those. This is a great way to do this because we can use the number of face divisions to create a very equally divided face which will have really good curvature. We can use analysis and take a look at the surface quality of this, the zebra stripes. Let's go ahead and rotate these in the other direction. And we can even view the ISO curves. Let's go ahead and go back to our feature and let's say okay to create this. Notice that sketch four and sketch three have gone away. Let's expand our bodies, hide body two, and let's go ahead and create a simple plane. I'm just going to create a rectangle, and I'm going to have eight divisions. And in this case, we want to make sure that the length divisions are only one, and that the width divisions are eight. From here, I'm going to go to Modify, 
and I'm going to use the match tool. I'm going to double click this edge as my T-spline edge and I'm going to select this edge. Notice that it's able to pull that directly up to my spline. Let's right click and repeat match using the other side. We'll select this side and we'll say OK. If we show body 2 and body 3, these are very similar. If we look at it from the front, you can see body 2 and body 3 are almost identical. There are going to be some minute differences, partially in the fact that the original body that we created with our loft has more divisions in the Y direction. But these are still both great options for us to create geometry like this. Let's go ahead and hide body 2 as well, and let's talk about another method that we can use. I'm going to go ahead and hide all the other sketches besides sketch 1, and I'm going to create an extrude from this side view. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. I'm going to view sketch 2 just to make sure that I go past it. And you can see here that now we can see sketch 2 underneath and we have our extrusion. I do want to make sure that I'm using uniform spacing and not curvature based spacing. If you're using this method on a spline that has a lot of curvature, you're most likely going to get some poor results. So we always want to strive for uniform spacing, whether or not we're starting from scratch or we're using some of these tools like extrude or loft. We're going to say OK. And remember that we projected this curve to this curve to create our 3D curve. That 3D curve is on sketch 3. You can see that the 3D curve lies exactly on this extrude. So there are a couple ways that we can approach this problem. One way is that we can use tools like modify and insert point to simply split the surface up. So if we want to select some points and say OK, we are now able to divide that up. But you will notice that dividing it up push that edge in further. If we go to box display, the division or the insert point is exactly where we expect. But you will notice that we created a straight line and using this method, it's much harder for us to get that smooth arc transition. A lot of work has to be done in order to get that to be nice and smooth. We can manually manipulate each of these. And of course, we could use tools to pull them to that curve to match it. Let's go ahead and let's try pull. I'm going to go ahead and select these vertices. And then I can use selected targets and select this curve. Notice that instantly it's causing a problem. And that's because I accidentally selected sketch two. Let's make sure that we reselect the sketch target. And in this case, we want to use control points and not surface points. I'm going to say OK. And now we're a little bit closer to a good result. Another thing that we can do when we come into a situation like this is we can create this edge and get rid of the other edge. Now, I will say that this specific workflow is something I saw recently in a video by Gichi Endo. Now, he has some amazing car videos. There was a comment in one of my videos pointing me toward him, and I think he does amazing work, and this is a really great technique to use. It's something that does take a little bit of time to understand, and the ability to break up edges like this using those tools can be a little bit difficult at times to understand. So if you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out how to create these curves in 3D, I think using the method of creating the 2D projections is likely the easiest one to control from a basic understanding. If we already have things like blueprints or product images, we have a reference where we can create those 2D splines and we can project them into 3D to get the edge exactly where we want it. Then we can use tools like loft and actually create some sort of form body going directly to that edge. I plan to cover these techniques a little bit more in future videos, but I at least wanted to give a basic understanding of how we can create those curves in 3D and the different ways that we can use them in the forms workspace. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.